Welcome, Shikma Lipmanovitz, Technion, Israel Institute of Technology. My name is Shikma Lipmanovitz, Director of Business Development at T3, Technion Technology Transfer. My prime mission is to continue crossing boundaries and creating bridges between academia and industry. Today, I have the pleasure to nominate Luminiscent as the science breakthrough of the year 2023. Why did I choose Luminiscent? Luminiscent is based on the technology developed by Professor Carmel Rogit from the Technion Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. The company built a small, efficient, low-cost heat engine which upcycles heat into zero-emission electricity. The first of its kind to be based on liquid, this engine has solved one of the fundamental thermodynamic problems. The company's unique technology has the potential to become a game changer for utilizing waste heat to produce clean energy. Breaking the wall to zero emission electricity from waste heat. Doron Tamir, luminescent heat engine. Hi, good morning. My name is Doron Tamir, and I'm the co founder and the CEO. I started my journey 15 years ago in the renewable business. In my first company, I was the biggest developer in Israel for renewable energy. My partner was EDF, the French utility. So after a decade, I come to the conclusion that solar, wind, batteries are amazing. But if we want to be serious about energy transition, it's not enough. It can be part of the solution, but it's not the solution. So we need to find something else. So I sold my company and established Luminescent three years ago. And in Luminescent, what we are trying to do, it's actually we understood that heat can be the problem or the solution for the major problem of the energy market. Because most of our electricity generated by heat, coal, nuclear, gas, all of them, we convert heat to electricity. So we develop a new thermodynamic cycle. So in the beginning, everyone told us that we are dreamers, that it's not possible. And they're absolutely right. It was very difficult. But in the end of the day, we execute a new thermodynamic cycle. And this thermodynamic cycle enables us to build a disruptive heat engine. And what's so unique about this heat engine is that it can be the third of the cost comparing to any other uh, technologies. So, you know, 2050, we are aiming to zero emission electricity, but no one knows how to do it. Okay, this heat engine actually can be solved some of the problems, some of the challenges. And I want to speak about the first challenge. The first challenge is storage, renewable storage. So, you know, we have solar and wind, it's amazing technology. It's cheap, simple, very good. But we need to, to store it when we have the wind is not blowing, the sun is not shining. So we need lithium-ion batteries, but they are need rare materials, and they are expensive, despite the fact that the prices are going down. So everyone knows this is not the solution. But we can go to another approach, to convert the heat, the, the electricity, to heat. So we need thermal storage. Thermal storage is very easy, actually. If you are going in the morning and you drink your coffee, and you put it in a thermos, you're using thermal storage. And if it's a good one, it will stay hot for three days. So you have a lot of thermal storage solution. So now you have renewable energy, simple. You have thermal storage, simple. What you need is just the missing part, which is a heat engine. So this is exactly what we are doing in Luminescent. Another challenge is waste heat. It's the um, holy grail of the energy. We have huge pot potential for waste heat, but we don't use it. Any industrial process, we have tons of waste heat, but we don't use it. So a friend of mine, his name is Felipe, he has a casting factory in uh, Milan, Italy. And, he, and we met three months ago, and he told me, hey, Doron, I need to, uh, it's a must for me to uh, uh, have a mission reduction, 30% by 2030. I have three options. One, to use green hydrogen. For the next decade, it's too expensive. Second, to use DAC, direct air capture, too expensive. So, but I have waste it. He have hot oil 180 degree. That going out from the process, it's invest energy, cool it down, and all over again. But we can take this waste heat and generate zero emission electricity, and on the same time to have emission reduction. But we can do it, and we can save to Felipe one million euro from his electricity bill. So the simple payback will be one year. Okay? So we can do it with hot oil, 
with hot water, steam, and hot gas. All of them we know to generate zero emission electricity. But 70% of the world energy is wasted. So imagine how many factories like Felipe you ha we have in the, our planet. So how many gigawatts of zero emission electricity we can generate just from waste it. So we have very good traction from the, uh, from the industry, uh, and we know that we have the missing part um, for our solution. This is our first turbine. Um, the prototype will be ready in Q1 2024. So <coughs> we already signed four MOUs. One, the number one with the number one company, the energy company in the US. The <coughs> second one, it's the number one industrial company in the EU. We already raised 20 million euro. So we have the funding, we have the motivation, we have the vision. And now with our heat engine and with all this great innovation, we can tackle the target of 2050. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's go for questions. Who has a question here? Yes, now you are the first one for sure. I would like to have a microphone here in the first row. That was brilliant, thank you. What's thank the you. bottleneck? You know, when, you're more, when you are taking the physics to the edge, so the bottlenecks, we already, fi uh, already approved the physics, okay? So we already achieved 90% isothermal efficiency. But now the problem is to make it from the engineering. Okay, to take this amazing physics and to build efficient uh, uh, turbine. So actually next week, uh, because we have the war and everything, so everything is a little bit delayed, but next week we are pushing the button uh, for our generation two. And uh, in Q1 24, we're going to have our pr uh, prototype. The prototype is going to be 60 kilowatt, full system, and if the prototype will be okay, then we can start to run for the storage and for the waste it. Actually, the storage, you didn't ask, but I will answer. Uh, <laughs> it's this was not planned. Uh, <laughs> but it's the same. The storage also is wasted. So it's a combination between renewable energy and wasted. OK, wonderful. Thank you. Next question, please. Next to you also in the first row, please, the microphone. Thanks to wait for the microphone all the time. Apologies if I missed it, but could you please explain the technology behind your engine? Yeah, it's five minutes. So to explain deep tech in five minutes, it's uh, it's yeah, complicated. One thirty. But yeah, but what we have actually, we build a nozzle. Usually, all the engines that you know are based on adiabatic expansion. Okay, this is the most inefficient way to have power, but this is the only way. Okay, what we are doing, we build a nozzle. It's just a simple pipe. Okay, we have hot liquid, ethylene glycol, that's going inside. Okay, the source of the heat can be anything. It can be solar, electricity, waste heat, geothermal, anything. We are doesn't care about it. And then we inject bubbles of gas into the nozzle. The bubbles start to expand. If it was adiabatic, there was cooling down. End of process. But in our case, because all the surrounding, it's hot liquid, so they, the bubbles suck the heat from the liquid, so they are not cooling down, so they continue to expand. Boom, and then you have isothermal expansion and everything is going out of the nozzle like a jet. Then we connect four, jet, four jets in one disk and it rotates like a sprinkler in your garden. Okay, it's a very easy uh, machine, no complicated machining, no complicated materials, no rare materials, very simple. If you didn't, don't understand, I will be here. You did an excellent job. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We have a question here at the back. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the talk. I have a question about the efficiency. So have you, have you had ever calculated the general efficiency when you, you know, after the whole process, like also calculate the energy you put you put uh, inside this engine and the cycle. Yeah, so when you are speaking about heat, you need to ask about the Carnot efficiency. We can achieve between 70 to 75% of Carnot efficiency. Now it depends on the temperature. You know, in 100 we have one efficiency, in 500 we have another efficiency. Our efficiency usually depends on the application. It's 30% more than the existing technology. But the more important question, it's not what is the efficiency, it was the cost per kilowatt hour, okay? Because in this, well, because the, our engine is very simple, we can be the third of the cost comparing to any other technology. Yeah. We have a very short question here in the first row. No? Okay. 
Last question here on the second row, please. Thank you so much for being so fast. Wait for the microphone. Thank you. Just a question. Does your um, engine also work with low temperature? I mean, the waste heat typically is 80 degrees, 60 degrees after you use it all. Yes, that's the yeah. yes, no answer because we have 15 seconds. Sorry to interrupt you. 13 seconds. So, yes. yeah, the answer is yes. Our storage solution works with the waste heat uh, with from 70 degrees and up. Wonderful. You make a fantastic job with the timing for sure. Thank, Thank you. you so much.